Let us pray. God of love, peace, and hope, we give you thanks for all that we are about to celebrate today, the achievements of the students of St. Paul's Collegiate during 2021 across the four cornerstones of our great school. We give you thanks for all those who have traveled with us during the journey of 2021. We give thanks for those who have supported us, cared for us, nurtured, and challenged us. We give thanks for the teaching and support staff of our school, parents, caregivers, whānau, friends, and the community we have enjoyed in our houses. Today, as we gather for this final assembly, we pray for our COVID-stricken world and all those involved in the frontline response and care of people. We pray for our planet home, that the global community will find ways to avoid climate change, disaster, catastrophe for the world's most vulnerable people. We pray for our nations and its leaders, our cities, towns, schools and communities as the long summer holidays draw close. We pray for all those taking exams, for those leaving us this year. Inspire us and guide us to be at our best and to become all that you call us to be as your people. In the name of Jesus Christ we pray, the author and pioneer of our faith, the foundation of this school, the pain bearer and life giver. Amen. May God bless and watch over us. We say together the words of the school prayer. Heavenly Father, giver of all that is good, we thank you for the blessings and privileges we daily enjoy as members of this school. Give us grace, we pray, to use your gifts to your glory in the service of others. Strengthen us to stand firm in our faith in our Saviour, Jesus Christ. May your Holy Spirit so rule our hearts and lives that we may daily grow in the love of you and one another. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And no Tēnā koutou katoa, kia ora e te whānau. welcome to the final full school assembly for the academic year 2021. Can I start by recognising and thanking Fraser, Caitlin and Rev for leading us through karakia and prayer today. Certainly they are unique times in which we live. As I stand here at, at the lectern in the sanctuary and look out, I look out to empty seats. I look out to an empty chapel. And the irony of that is not lost on me. This particular building is a place of community. It's a place where we gather often to give thanks for our talents and for our blessings, to give honor to God, to recognize and celebrate outstanding student achievement. And at a pragmatic level, at times we meet in this space to hit reset and to remind ourselves of expectations of the daily logistics and operational detail that's required for us to live and work in community together. But today I stand here at the lectern looking out simply at a camera in front of me. And I, like you no doubt, wish that this room, this chapel, this sacred space, our whare, was full right now. That indeed would delight me, as I'm sure it will, to each of you. However, there are many things in life that we can't control, and if 2021 has taught us anything, it has demonstrated and highlighted to each of us at an individual and at a collective level how sometimes you just have to roll with the punches. Sometimes you just have to wait and know that the sun will come out. And as we move as a society, as a Aotearoa New Zealand community to the summer, my thoughts and prayers are with us all that we may have a summer and we may have a time ahead that is very different to the days, the weeks, the months that have recently passed. As we commence today's final full school assembly for this year, I wish to acknowledge that there are a large number of students, the vast majority of our year 11, 12 and 13 students, who are currently in teaching spaces across our campus with staff individually observing alert level three protocols. Certainly if you asked 24 months ago, nobody would know what that meant. It would frankly be gibberish. 
But we speak these days of alert level three protocols, health and safety measures, physical distancing, uh, hand hygiene, hand sanitizers. These are all common things as part of our everyday language. And to the large number, the vast majority of our student population in the senior school years 11 to 13, who join us today on campus in different spaces, I welcome you to this important event. To a number of students in year 11 through to 13 who join us at home for this particular assembly, again, we respect, we validate your decision. And as such, we wish you the very best as you're in a preparatory phase for external assessments that are due to come. To our year nine and our year 10 students who currently have no choice and are learning via our distance and our, uh, our digital learning platform from home, we wish you well at this time. We were delighted yesterday to hear that as of the middle of next week, you can join us back on campus. And we look forward to the rituals and the time and the common experiences we will share as we make our way towards your respective end to the 2021 academic year. And similarly in the way that today and tomorrow morning we'll recognise outstanding student achievement, particularly in reference to senior school, your time will come towards the conclusion of this year in early December where we'll do the same for you. And likewise, we'll take moments to give thanks to honour and to count our blessings. Finally, to those who join us online today, who are members of our wider community, the incredible parents who support us in our endeavours as we work in partnership to educate our young people, to those who are friends, who are supporters of our St Paul's community, who firmly believe in our philosophy and have stood steadfast not only in faith but in the conviction that what is happening within our two campuses, both at Tihoi and here in the Waikato, stand as being critical in terms of the holistic development and growth of young people who in time to go on will lead wonderful lives, enriched lives, and will add immense contributions to our wider society. I thank each of you for joining us this afternoon from wherever you may be, in your homes or in your places of work. This afternoon is a celebration. It's step one of a two-step process as we move towards our formal end of year prize giving that will occur tomorrow morning. And I never let an opportunity to do some housekeeping go by without stressing some key operational detail. And that is thank you so much for tuning in today and we'd love for you to tune in at 10 a.m. tomorrow morning. But to this afternoon we go. And as we go towards this afternoon's celebration of student success, achievement, contribution, I'd like to start by asking Deputy Headmaster in charge of boarding, Mr Craig Hardman, to come forward to make our acknowledgement to our heads of boarding, our student leaders for 2021. Thank you, Mr Hardman. Tēnā katoa. Good afternoon, school. What a year 2021 has been. Busy, unpredictable, interrupted, certainly one of a kind, certainly one to remember. However, whilst there have been challenges, I encourage you to think about the successes, the good times, the funny times, and the lifelong friendships. It is my absolute pleasure to recognise the efforts of the boarding portfolio and our heads of, of boarding. Firstly, to our heads of Sargood and Clark House, Sam Lintz and Joshua Gullery, you have all led your houses with pride, with passion. Thank you for being an example for others. As a boarding community, all four heads have done an excellent job in the way that they have led their houses. A particular highlight for me was our charity relay. Buy-in, camaraderie, record number of money raised. The enthusiasm by all is a direct reflection of your leadership as heads of house and the support of your fellow students gave towards this event. 
Thank you to the wider portfolio who have been involved, whether this be in boarding directly through prep, food, academics, and wider activities. To Katie Brown and to, to Jay Broomfield. As heads of boarding, you have taken the mantle from Greta and Tiaki and continue to build on what has gone before you. I remember our very first meeting of the year. You were both very quiet. You both absorbed a lot of information. We talked in our first meeting about stamping your mark on boarding. And wow, you both have done this in the best possible way. Jay, you have rep represented Williams House in the way that a Williams House man should. You have made the most of your opportunities. You have led by example. You are humble, you are measured, and you have helped to improve boarding. Jay, you will have had, uh, sorry, Jay, you will have made those who have gone before you extremely proud. Your calm and approachable demeanor will, be put, uh, will put you in good stead for your future. And for that, I thank you. To Katie Brown. Katie, for me, you have led your boarding community and Harrington House in an exceptional way. You are calm, you are approachable, and you are extremely enthusiastic when dealing with both staff and with students. Your confidence in yourself and the way in which you have empowered others has gone from strength to strength this year. For me, you have made the most out of your St Paul's experience in the most selfless way. You have embraced every cornerstone of the school and you will leave a lasting impression on all students and staff. Well done, Katie. On behalf of myself and the senior leadership team, I would like to congratulate the boarding portfolio this year on your effort that you've put into your respective houses. You have, you have all had the students, the staff, and um, your second home at the forefront of your decision-making, your actions, and the example, and the legacy that you have left for others. To those heads, and to Katie and Jay in particular, take care, be who you are, lead, and follow your dreams and your aspirations, and I wish you all the best. I'd like to uh, invite Mr. Robson now to come forward as he will acknowledge the heads of school. Tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou katoa, nā mihi nui ki a koutou katoa. Good afternoon, school. Uh, following on from Mr Hartman's efforts, uh, I would like to acknowledge all student leaders uh, across the school, across all their respective portfolios, and acknowledge the job they have done in 2021. However, I've been charged with the honour, uh, with the privilege of issuing a, a few words of reflection and commentary on the four head students of St Paul's Collegiate School for 2021. Head boy, Matthew Adele, head girl, Gretel Muir, and the two deputies, Caitlin Flaggate and Fraser Tam. Four very different individuals with different skill sets, leadership styles, personality traits. But as a group, they have come together as a cohesive team doing an admirable job in the carrying out of their assigned duties. As a group, along with many of their peers, have had a number of challenging endeavours placed before them this year, some planned and some not. They have had to navigate their way through the exit of a long-standing headmaster and breaking in of a new one. They have had to meet the traditional milestones of house activities and competitions, endeavour to add value to various portfolios and major school events, coordinate the daunting prefect assemblies represent the school at open days and other related activities. They have also had the responsibility of monitoring and influencing student morale, modelling patience, understanding and resilience to a community that had every right to be anything but because of the restrictions of our national alert levels. While all the while them themselves lamenting over the idea that their final year at school was possibly being sabotaged by these unprecedented times. But tough times create tough people. What is leadership? Or well, more specifically, student leadership. Rev has talked to the origin of the word prefect in past chapel services. It dates back to the Roman Empire, where a prefect was an individual who controlled or superintended a particular command. 
The word comes from the Latin word proficio, which translates to I place in command. So while the origins of the title suggest a prefect in a school setting as a pupil in a position of power over other pupils, that is most definitely not the definition of prefectship, student leadership in this school. And that hasn't been the mantra of this group. Rather, the emphasis has and remains to be on servant leadership. The title head of school, prefect, means that you've been bestowed the honour of representing the student body, speaking on their behalf, holding their best interests in heart, while at the same time themselves modelling the expectations and upholding the special character and culture of this special school. So to the four heads for 2021, your leadership tenure will be judged on your actions and not your words or intent. And in that regard, I believe all four of them can take great pride in their efforts over this turbulent year. There are a number of qualities and traits that shine through when someone is doing a good job as a leader. Consistent to all four of this year's heads are, one, they are all goal-orientated, with a clear and realistic vision of what they wanted for the school and how they could help to achieve it. Number two, all four are very good listeners, some of the best I've ever worked with. Number three, they are all excellent communicators on a multitude of different platforms. Number four, and probably what I've found most impressive about this particular group, is that they are decisive decision makers. And number five, and all, all four are unfailingly positive in their intentions with others. They go out of their way to encourage others to contribute and to add value to their school. In fact, I can't recall a single moment where even one of the four expressed doubt or reservation about a task, even though the, the extremes of the year would have undoubtedly cast some internal worries. Focusing on the individual, if I can, I'd like to highlight one specific leadership trait that I believe best personifies the value added by each member of these four students. Fraser Tam. Fraser Tam stands out for his, working, uh, for his hard working and persevering attitude. Taking a quote from the famous baseballer Joe DiMaggio, a person always doing his or her best becomes a natural leader just by example. Fraser has been the door of the group. You can always call upon him to put a program together to organise the mechanics. A job I, funnily enough, relate to. Caitlin Flaggate personifies the positive value of having the service, or, um, service to others mindset. I think a Nelson Mandela quote sums her year up best. A leader is like a shepherd. They stay behind the flock, letting the most nimble go out ahead, whereupon the others follow, not realising that all along they are being directed from behind. Caitlin's consistent act of kindness and selflessness helped unite the diverse prefect group. Add to that her courage and strength of character, despite the challenges faced, she has demanded the utmost respect in a very quiet and unassuming way. Matthew Adele, our head boy for 2021, has stood out for his transparency and his raw honesty and integrity. He has not requested anything of his peers that he himself isn't already doing or prepared to do. To be persuasive, one needs to be believable. To be believable, one needs to be creditable. To be creditable, one must be truthful. On reflection, I think Matthew has been all of those things and as such will finish the year as a highly regarded and successful head of school. Gretel Muir, head girl, stands out as the one who took responsibility for all outcomes for this team. As the former US President, Mr Eisenhower said, leadership consists of nothing but taking responsibility for everything that goes wrong and giving your colleagues credit for everything that goes well. Gretel was the glue that held the team together. She owned everything done by this team, but never sought the limelight or accolades. She has been a wonderful head girl, respected, valued, and appreciated by staff and students alike. So reflecting back on your prefect commissioning, the four head students of 2021 can take great pride in the fact that you did carry out your duties to the best of your abilities, that you did lead by example, displaying the necessary qualities of responsibility, maturity, and enthusiasm. And you did care for your fellow students, upholding, promoting the special values and the spirit of this school. Well done on a job well done. Gives me pleasure to invite Emily Jin to come forward and perform for the school.
Outstanding. Absolutely outstanding. Congratulations, uh, Emily, and thanks to Scott for your role in accompanying on uh, the piano. There's absolutely no doubt whatsoever that the technical acumen that went into that piece is incredible, to say the least, for someone your age. So well done again, Emily. Uh, tremendous performance. Just wish to pick up on what Mr. Hardman and uh, Mr. Robson shared with us. They shared acknowledgement, thanks, and also notes of celebration in reference to six outstanding young people that join us in the sanctuary today. And likewise, I'd like to add my sincere thanks, my appreciation to Jay, to Katie, to Fraser, to Caitlin, to Matt, and to Gretel for the ways in which they have supported me in my role during this period of transition, moving into a new space and into a new community. Certainly it hasn't gone unnoticed, the way in which these six outstanding young people have gathered around me and have given me feedback and given me an insight into what makes this place very special. The nuances, the nature of our student body, and in particular, the spirit. And to that end again, I wish to acknowledge and formally thank each of those outstanding young people who have been profiled by Mr. Hardman and Mr. Robson today. In acknowledging them and farewelling them as incredibly special people who have had an immense impact on this community, I now wish to turn attention to another individual who in a similar vein has poured his heart and poured his soul into this place. This afternoon, we recognise a long-serving staff member who, at the conclusion of the 2021 academic year, leaves us to commence a new chapter in Auckland. This afternoon, I wish to recognise and pay absolute appreciation to the contribution and to the efforts of Mr Neil Muirhead. Mr Muirhead arrived at St Paul's Collegiate School in 1999 as an experienced teacher and educational leader, having held numerous roles as a mathematics teacher, previous head of department of mathematics, boarding master and timetabler in secondary schools in both South Africa and New Zealand, in particular in a New Zealand context in Te Puke and also in Auckland. 
Commencing at St Paul's in 1999, Mr Muirhead has observed, participated in and led numerous educational changes as he served our school with great commitment and energy. These roles have included, in an academic sense, being a mathematics teacher throughout the entirety of his 23 years here with us at the school. Between 1999 and 2011, Mr Muirhead was a mathematics teacher with responsibilities for year, 11, sorry, year 9 through to year 13 classes, with an in particular focus on year 13 statistics. From 2012 through to the present day, Mr Muirhead has continued in the same vein, but with a slight change in focus to year 13 calculus. And from 2019 through to the present, has been a master teaching Cambridge IGCSE Mathematics. Alongside those classroom responsibilities, Mr Muirhead has included in terms of his contribution in, tw in 20, uh, 2003, sorry, the role of co-acting head of Department of Mathematics with responsibilities for the implementation of NCEA Level 1. As a mathematics teacher, Mr Muirhead's command of the syllabus and his genuine desire to extend his students has certainly shone through. Furthermore, his sharp eye and analytical brain has been a real asset to our school, as he's assumed at various times responsibilities within our timetabling team. Arguably, however, it's been outside the classroom in the space of pastoral care where Mr Muirhead has made the greatest contribution to the lives of young people here at St Paul's. His contributions in this space read as follows. Assistant Housemaster of Clark House, 2001 to 2003. Housemaster Williams House, 2004 to 2006. Williams House Tutor, 2007 to 2008. Assistant Housemaster of Clark House, 2009 to 2011, and then again 2013 to 2014. Housemaster of Clark House, 2015 to 2018. And Housemaster of Schoolhouse over the last two years, 2020 to 2021. In these roles, Mr Muirhead has had responsibilities for the pastoral care of young people, for discipline when at times maybe they somewhat went astray, the running of house meetings, the organising of house activities and house dinners, acting as a liaison with our parent community, writing newsletters, writing with reports, you name it, Mr Muirhead has done it. Importantly, he's exercised these roles with professionalism, with compassion, and with an unwavering approach, which is focused on advocating for and enhancing the needs of the young people in his care. Furthermore, Mr Muirhead has been fond of speaking into the extracurricular lives of young men and women and has mentored, coached and managed numerous sides over his long association with our school. This has included being the coach, manager and mentor at various times, coupled with, obviously, this particular role focusing on the girls' first 11 hockey side, commencing in 2004 in those various roles and continuing to the present day. As a Colts cricket team coach between 1999 and 2004. Coaching rugby between 1999 and 2003, in particular with under 14 and under 15 sides, and being the master in charge of rugby here at the school between 2001 and 2003. Coaching athletics between 2019 and the present day, and being a manager of various tennis sides between 2004 and 2018 a contribution that is extraordinary. Outside of his professional duties, Mr Muirhead has uh, himself competed in the chosen sport of hockey and to this current day plays club hockey in both summer and winter competitions. As a representative for Waikato and North Harbour teams in the national men's hockey tournaments, Mr Muirhead is an example of an individual who works hard but plays hard as well. On a personal note this afternoon, I wish to recognise Mr Muirhead as a colleague. I have certainly enjoyed, over the course of this year, getting to know Mr Muirhead in a professional sense and also in a personal sense as well. His integrity, the dignified manner in which he operates, and most importantly, his genuine care to better others is something that certainly stands out for me. 
When I reflect on Mr Muirhead and his contribution, he has touched numerous young people's lives. But importantly, at the same time, he has spoken into the lives of so many of his colleagues. He has provided them with sage advice, provided them with the encouraging back slap when required. He has provided them with the hug or the comforting words when they've needed it. He's given them the sense that they can fly by his words and by, at times, his unassuming actions. He is indeed an outstanding educational leader and an outstanding man. As he moves to the next chapter of his life, based up in Auckland, he goes with our greatest blessings, with our prayers, with our thoughts, and with our sincere and genuine thanks. We hope that for Mr Muirhead, the time ahead is a time for more reading, a time for more gardening, and a time for lots of reflection. 23 years is an immense contribution, and there are many reflections that I no doubt he will have as he looks back with fondness on his time here within our great community. And as he looks back on, with fondness, we look forward understanding that for this community, he has been a giant, and on his shoulders, we now stand. In concluding, I wish to thank once again Mr Muirhead. I'd love to be able to shake his hand today or to give him a hug and thank him on your behalf, but my simple words will have to do instead. In acknowledging Mr Muirhead, we acknowledge an outstanding educator, an outstanding contributor, an outstanding St Paul's community member, but most importantly, an outstanding man. Wherever you are within our community today, I ask you to stand and to acknowledge the outstanding work of Mr Muir Head. Thank you. Good afternoon, or as I am wont to say, never mind the time of day. Good morning, all. Sitting across on the side and being fairly still, I have a, a Fitbit that I think is saying exactly the opposite because the heart is beating somewhat at the moment. In January 1982, I, a fresh-faced physical education and mathematics teacher, took up my first teaching position in a small country boarding school in Howick, Natal, South Africa. In December 2021, I may have my last day as a full-time teacher. No finalised plans in that space yet. In preparing this speech, I wondered about a number of aspects of my teaching career here at St Paul's. And in my printout here, I have the word number in bold. I hope I can manage this without a mirror. Start again. I apologise for the time taken, but Mr Skeen said I had all afternoon. Right, here's the question and the relevance to that particular action. How many times, notice another maths term, have I had to tie a tie in preparation for work? Get your calculators out, please, and we'll work on an estimate. Five days times 38 weeks times 40 years, rounded to one significant figure, about 8,000 times. 2021 marks the end of my 40th year of teaching and my 23rd year here at St Paul's. I can actually say that I started teaching at St Paul's last century. 
That means I've spent more than a third of my life teaching here at St. Paul's. To be precise, 38.3 recurring percent. If I had my own schooling and uni years, I've been directly involved with education for some 56 years. Oops. A strange question was posed when I was interviewed for my position here at St. Paul's. It was noted that I'd taught at a number of schools previously. The question, would I stay at St. Paul's very long? I'm beginning to think I finally have a handle on the definition for infinity. Statistics, got to keep a bit of maths, or of a maths theme going. I thank Mr. Skeen for his comments and hope that I don't duplicate too much, but my numbers are perhaps looking at it from a slightly different angle. Approximately 4,000 names would have been included on my class roles in four different subjects that I have taught. I have coached or managed close on 40 hockey teams, 16 rugby teams, 18 cricket teams, 15 tennis teams, numerous athletes, oh, and a few sailors. I've been involved as a housemaster or deputy housemaster in day and boarding houses for 27 and a half years. Where am I going with these numbers? I ask myself, how many students have had to put up with me over the years? Figuring that out might take longer than solving a standard differential equation. St Paul's has been very good to me and my family. And I suppose this is the key to my short address this afternoon. I really would like to express my gratitude for the many opportunities I've been afforded in a number of aspects over my time here. And I'll sort of put them together in four areas. In the academic field, opportunities offered. I was able to teach different courses and levels, year nine to 13, or in the old vernacular, form three to seven. Both statistics and calculus to year 13. Waikato maths, some of you may remember that, students wouldn't and Cambridge Maths at year 11. I had time assisting with the leading of the department, and I was also let loose in the science department, but only for one year. For a good number of years, I was part of the team doing the school timetable, which for a maths geek was an absolute highlight. In a pastoral role, 18 and a half years, involvement in both day and boarding houses. I will treasure so many memories of a huge variety of occasions, from house dinners to roll calls, house competitions to middle of the night visits to A&E, and of the people, from colleagues to parents to students. In sport and culture, right, I've got no culture, so let's just stick with sport. I've had the opportunity to work with so many wonderful people through my involvement with cricket, tennis, athletics, rugby, and hockey. Again, in a variety of roles, from TIC to manager to coach. Oh, and I was allowed to sing in the staff choir. Way back, being offered the chance to coach girls hockey pushed me out of my comfort zone, but provided me with a challenge. I discovered a passion, and looking back, an aspect of my time at St. Paul's that constantly uplifted and re-energized me. Lastly, family. St. Paul's was home to me and my family here on campus for 15 years. In fact, by the time my youngest son left school, he had only lived off-site for just over three years. Moving on from this place will leave a hole in my life that I know I don't yet appreciate. I had the opportunity to teach both my sons here. My daughter was a little wiser and avoided the situation. I've been fortunate to have coached all my children hockey. There is a bit of a theme, this uh, sport hockey. But I coached the boys in primary teams and I was fortunate enough to coach my daughter in her time here at St. Paul's. As Mr. Skeen mentioned, I still managed to play club and masters hockey. And a highlight in terms of that has meant that for about eight seasons, 
I've been able to play in the same club team as one or both of my sons. Something really special. I feel privileged to have taught at St. Paul's and to have had such a large portion of my teaching career here has been simply awesome. So my spell at St. Paul's draws to a close and a new chapter unfolds. I might have been a little more elaborate if I was in the English department, but this will do for now. I have to say thank you to so many people that I will not name individuals for fear of leaving someone out. Over the years, I owe a huge gratitude and thanks to members of senior management of the school, the maths department, who have always really been a special and close group of people to my heart. Other teaching staff and colleagues, pastoral staff, support staff across all areas of the school, parents, and in bold and underlined, you, the students. Seriously, the many wonderful memories and experiences gained here, again a cliched comment, my apologies, will stay with me for the rest of my life. Not so seriously, I'm really looking forward to moving up to Auckland, close to the beach, so that I can work on my sign. No, no, my cos. Oh no, I'll work on my tan. Let me see, the constant of integration, year 12, I hope you've got that one. What else can I add? For those other statistically minded folk out there, more than a baker's dozen, and just less than a score of mathematical terms and expressions were used in the construction of this speech. Thank you and God bless. Maybe within your classroom spaces and at home, you may not have uh, had the privilege of seeing what was happening here in the sanctuary as Mr Muirhead concluded his address, and that was each of us standing in recognition of an incredible contribution to the life of St Paul's Collegiate School. To that end, once again, our sincere thanks, Mr Muirhead, and best wishes for a very happy and healthy future. We now move to the part of the final assembly where we take a moment to recognise the continuation of outstanding student achievements that we have been able to share in as a community at various times throughout this year via Headmasters Assemblies. And in a moment, we move to cultural awards and include within that both cultural and sporting achievements that in the year to date, we have been unable to appropriately recognise. To that end, I'd like to ask Assistant Headmaster, Mr Josh Hay forward to lead you in this particular part of the Assembly. Thank you, Mr Hay. I'd just like to take this opportunity, Mr Muirhead, um, to congratulate you on an amazing teaching career um, at St Paul's and wish you the best of luck in Auckland. But in particular, your outstanding commitment to co-curricular. Um, as mentioned, your commitment, your sacrifice um, you have at the school and the influence you've had on many lives in hockey to tennis to athletics is truly appreciated and we wish you the best of luck. <coughs> Good afternoon, staff, students and the wider St Paul's community. As we're well aware, the sports, arts and culture domains has been disrupted, postponed and often cancelled this year. Despite the situation, you, the students, have continued to control the controllables and do what and when you can. It gives me great pleasure to recognise senior students who over their time and commitment while at St Paul's Collegiate will receive their caps and also in some cases their colours but also a select group of junior students who have also achieved this year earning their junior colours, so the future is looking bright in the co-curricular field at St Paul's Collegiate. 2021 Colours. 
Isabella Etherington has won the National United Nations Association speech competition where she spoke about the importance of the United Nation and how it is, how it is viewed by the younger generation. Congratulations, Isabella. Senior Colours, football. Year 12, Fergus William is a member of the First Eleven football team. He was also selected to trial for the New Zealand Under-17 football team. He played in the Northern League for the Hamilton City Wanderers. Senior Sport Colours for Squash. Mai Kelly, ranked number three in the Waikato and was selected in the Waikato Under-19 Junior Squash Squad. School colours for senior school colours for swimming. Luke Isabel was a key member of the senior member of St Paul's Swimming Club. We won a bronze in the 100 metre butterfly, senior boys, first in the senior mix 2x50 freestyle relay in the New Zealand Secondary School Championships. Senior colours for lacrosse, Ashley Mayo. At the start of the year, she was selected for the Waiko under, under 18 um, lacrosse team, which won the nationals. School colours, senior colours for hockey, Milan Hood, who represented North Harbour under 18s, his home province at the national tournament. The following boys received their senior colours for rowing. Tom Haycock, Lewis Yetzinger, Tom Matthews and Sam Ward were all part of the boys under 84 that competed in the Marty Cup final this year. As well, Fred Phillips was the coxswain for the under 18 girls quad, which won a bronze medal at the Marty Cup. Following, following students in the latter part of the year have earned their respective caps for their chosen sports. Due to COVID um, lockdowns and levels, we haven't had the opportunity to recognise those people. The first person is Anu, Anuru Panga Morgan. In 2020, a quiet and shy young man arrived from Gisborne. 18 months later, Anuru is now a genuine leader and a quality all-round rugby player. Making his debut versus Napier Boys High in 2020, he played nine games at first five, but in 2021 had a position change to second five and has taken his challenge head on to be one of the best in the franchise. Deceptively fast with a great attacking skill set, he has become a big threat to opposition defences with his triple threat approach. He is a reliable and tough defender who works hard on his game to maximise his opportunity. Congratulations, Adonu, and wish you the best of luck as you head down to Canterbury and Crusaders country. Tevita Takeaho arrived from Tonga in 2019 following his brother's footsteps. He made his debut also against Napier Boys High in 2020. Tevita has taken every opportunity offered and has grown with every performance. This year he was a regular member of the starting first 15, using his physical presence to get some good go forward, also a very reliable defender. A good off-season gave him an engine to work harder for longer periods of time sorry, and he showed real crack character in these non-travel COVID times in the last two years, and also a key member of the Four Pete winning team. Congratulations to Vita. Alexis McLennan. Alexis has been involved with the netball for an entire three years at St Paul's Collegiate and the Premier Team. She has worked her way to the Premier Team with a determined and resilient attitude. In 2021, she was a regular starter, player with a real presence on the court. Alexis is a has the flexibility of playing at both ends of the court and can offer elevation, shooting accuracy and physical presence. Alexis is a contributing factor in the positive Simples netball culture as she is enthusiastic, passionate and full of competitive energy. Alexis is not only influential on the court, she has been an umpire to support the growth of netball and allows others to reach their full potential. Congratulations, you three. Staying with caps, football. Fergus Williams has played his first game for the First Eleven back in 2018 as a Year 9 student. In that game he scored two goals and showed himself to be a gritty, competitive and tenacious player. Over the next three years, Fergus has only enhanced that reputation, is now an integral member of the squad. Clinical in front of the goal, Fergus has been the top goal scorer for two seasons in a row. He's ferociously competitive and the rest of the team looked to him for leadership and inspiration. He is deserved recipient of the honours cap. Diddy Lawson. Diddy Lawson has also been a member of the First Eleven football squad for three seasons, making his debut back in 2019. Essentially a midfield player, Diddy's versatility allows him to play both in attack and defence. This year, with the squad being so young, Diddy has been in a leadership figure, setting the tone with his physicality and his confidence on the ball. He has developed into a fantastic player, guaranteed starter, and a player the rest of the team look for leadership and direction. He's a well-deserved recipient of his honours cap. Congratulations, you two. Staying with caps, moving to rowing. 
Tom Haycock has rowed for the school since a Year 9 student, attending a number of regattas, including Marty Cups and Karapura and Twizel. This year's Marty, he was in the crew that made the A final for the under 18 four, as well as the same crew coming third in North Island Secondary Schools. Logan Spencer has also rowed since his time here as a Year 9 student, starting as a Year 9 student, sorry. He's also attended a number of regattas, both in the North and the South Island, and Logan is very passionate about the sport of rowing. And this year's Marty Cup, Logan also won the silver medal in the under 17 double. Joe Harcourt has also been a part of the St Paul's Rowing Club since Year 9, attending regattas both in Carapiro and Twizel, and for four years Joe has made a significant contribution to the culture of the rowing club. Joe has also made an A final this year in the Marty Cup in the under 16 double. Congratulations to those senior students that have achieved their colours and caps this year. Moving now on to the junior aspect of the co-curricular field. The following students have received the respective junior colours. Matthew De Hotman and Luca Lim, both for football, were selected and attended New Zealand Regional Football Camp where they had the opportunity to play against the football ferns. Lockie Mowat, Athletics, competed in YBOP competition where he came third in the intermediate hurdles and second in the 4x100 intermediate relay. Lucas Hopkins, Softball, was selected for the Waikato Under-15 Softball squad. Cade Slade, selected in the first 11 as a year 10 student and also been talent ID'd by Waikato Hockey. Continue with junior colours. <clears throat> Ella Redman and Emily Pickering, both were selected in the Hamilton City Under-16 A team. Matthew Chamwai for swimming, was a member of the National Open Water Championship where the team came second overall. He also was sixth in the Open Water one kilometre race, second in the mixed 4 by 50 freestyle and the Waikato Secondary Schools where he became second in the Intermediate 100 free. Boston Tordoff was also a member of the National Open Water Champion team that came second. He was fourth in, in the Open Water one kilometre, also at Waikato Secondary Schools inter, Intermediate level. He was first in the 50 and 100 metre breaststroke, where the 100 was a meet record for that meet. Isabella Etherington was selected for the Waikato Women and Waikato Under 21 water polo squads. Congratulations to all those students. I wish those senior students continued luck and hope they continue with their sport as they leave school. But also I hope um, next year is a little bit different for our junior students and you get the opportunity to continue to develop in your area. I'd now like to present the cultural awards to the following students. Emily Jin, Samara Nation, Scott Zoe and Matthew Chamwai were all members of the Four Sooks who represented the school in the 2021 New Zealand Chamber Music Competition. The Waikato District Round where they were again highly commended and were Northern Region finalists, order, uh, sorry, achieving a National Bronze Award. Congratulations you four. <coughs> Matthew Chamwai was a New Zealand Chamber Music 2001 Award. He was a member and national finalist, top 12 Chamber Music Group in New Zealand in the June Clifford National Silver Award. Sonia Kansal receives the Hamilton Piano Centre Music Cup for excellence in all musical areas of school life at St Paul's Collegiate. Scott Zoe is awarded the Jan Frisk Organ Cup for organ playing and contribution to chapel music here at St Paul's Collegiate. And the recipient of the Jared Shearer Plate, the most valuable band member for St Paul's in um, cultural, is Chloe Park. Congratulations to all you students and I wish you continued success and you can develop your fine, amazing talents. On that note, I would now like to invite the talented Joanna Lee to the stage to entertain us with her amazing musical talents. Thank you.
Thank you, Joanna, for those wonderfully dulcet and cacophonous tones. Uh, truly impressive, uh, lovely to see. We move from sporting and cultural excellence to academic performance this year. Firstly, I'd like to present some awards for the construction class, and all these awards are for diligence in construction. Firstly. James Anderson. Henry Corson. Joshua Hurst. James McLenahan. Sam Pepper. William Savage. Jack Seath, Hunter Singh, George Stace, Bray Taylor, Natana Truman, Kauri Turanga, Lewis Yetzinger and Jacob Williamson. We now move to the year 11 academic prizes. Third in agricultural and horticultural science, Caitlin Walters. Third in art, Sheard. Chloe Sue. Also third in art shared, Mia Worth. Third in business studies, Matheson Lett. Third in IGCSE English Cambridge shared, Lawson Hart. Also third in IGCSE English Cambridge Shared, Ryan Ho. Third in furniture making, Yushuan Shi. Third in geography, Shared, Remy Grunendijk. Third in graphics, Michaela White. Third in music, Chichang Huang. Third in Spanish, Nathaniel Green. Second in accounting shared, Gain Hubbard. Second in drama, Vanessa Joyce. 
second in IGCSE Biology, Cambridge, Nuo Chen. Second in IGCSE Biology, Cambridge, Junlin Young. Second in Sports Science, Nathaniel Allen. Second in Business Studies and third in Drama, Sarah Johnstone. Second in Furniture Making and third in Sports Science, Matthew de Hopman. Second in Graphics and third in Digital Visual Arts, Joshua Blake. Second in Computer Science, Shared, and second in Music, Shang Chang. Second in Digital Visual Arts, and second in French, Caitlin Lau. Second in Agricultural and Horticultural Science, second in Economics, and third in Science, Jackson Bays. Second in Level 3 Music, second in IGCSE Mathematics, Cambridge, and second in IGCSE Physics, Cambridge, Matthew Chanwai. We now move to the Year 12 Awards. Third in Agricultural and Horticultural Science, Shared, James Brown. Third in Photography, Caroline Bagley. Third in Drama, Shared, Sethram Janiala. Third in Drama, Shared, Riley Rolton. Third in Engineering, Narco Bensman. Third in Furniture Making, Quinn Murphy. Third in Geography, Shared, Anthony Donoghue. Third in History, Dylan Fletcher. Third in Mathematics with Calculus, Hannah Swan. Second in Agricultural and Horticultural Science, Buster Harper. Second in Art Design, Kenzo Robka. Second in Art Painting, Shared, Alana Sayer. Second in Art Photography, James Smith. Second in Level 3 Art Printmaking, Anakira McClay. Second in Computer Applications, Yashuan Fang. Second in Furniture Making, Alex Mitchell. Second in Music, Riley Jones. Second in Accounting Shared, and third in Geography Shared, Taiki Lin. Second in Art Painting Shared, and third in Graphics, Milan Hood. Second in Biology Shared, and third in Earth and Space Science Shared, Alan Healy. Second in Computer Science and second in Electronics, Ben Grant. Second in Economics and second in Te Reo Māori, Maya Kelly. We now move to the Year 13 Awards. Third in Accounting, Chloe Carr Patterson. Third in Agricultural and Horticultural Science, Jack Seath. Third in Art Photography, Drake Waltham. Third in Biology, 
Zoe Hannah. Third in construction, Sam Pepper. Third in engineering, shared, Nicholas Healy. Third in geography, shared, Gretel Muir. Third in sports science, Matthew Waddell. Second in agribusiness, shared, Madeline Buckley. Second in art photography, Grace Kingsnorth. Second in construction, Jacob Williamson. Second in engineering, George Oliver. Second in mathematics with statistics, Campbell Colquhoun. Second in media studies, Nina Hewitt. Second in Te Reo Māori, Ruby Kapani Paitai. Third in Earth and Space Science, and third in Geography, shared Amy Roche. Third in Graphics, third in Mathematics with Calculus, and third in Chemistry, Joseph Grigg. Second in Art Painting, and third in Media Studies, Grace Johnstone. Second in French, and third in A-Level Mathematics, Cambridge, Jessamine Freiburg. Second in Graphics, and third in Engineering, shared, Toby Finlayson. And second in Agribusiness, shared, and second in Economics, Caitlin Fladgate. Headmaster. Thank you, Mr. Coley, and congratulations to those award winners. In particular, my thanks uh, to you and to Mr. Bradford for the way in which you lead the academic side of the school. And obviously, uh, prior to that, um, my thanks to Mr. Hay for his leadership for the extracurricular side of the school. Uh, wonderful that uh, each of you could be here in order to recognise, celebrate the outstanding achievements of young people within your portfolios. Uh, there are two final trophies or awards uh, that I would like to uh, provide some context to uh, this afternoon. And the first is uh, st uh, sticking sorry, with uh, the theme of scholarly pursuit and uh, the demonstration of academic knowledge. And that is, of course, the House Quiz competition winners need to be named this afternoon. So it gives me pleasure to congratulate uh, the young people of Schoolhouse on winning that particular competition. The House Quiz competition as such is one of those treasured competitions throughout the year which sees students come together in order to enter into healthy scholastic competition. And to that end, my thanks for all who are involved in that particular pursuit. Also recognise that right at the very heart of this community is our house structure and our ability to join together as smaller communities within the wider St Paul's Fano, and to be able to enjoy the diversity of talents, to try new things, to challenge ourselves, and for many of you to go completely outside your comfort zone into different pursuits or areas of wider school life that maybe necessarily you don't get to during the course of everyday living. And as such, 2021, albeit through constant interruptions, has been no different in the fact that our house competition has allowed for great camaraderie, for healthy competition, for wonderful laughs, 
and for a diversity of student talent to be on display. To that end, my thanks to housemasters and staff who joined together in order to mentor, to coach, to encourage, to cajole, to implore, to support our young people in the house competition. Now at this stage I appreciate that you'll be looking at me from this lectern and thinking, would he please just stop talking and tell us who has won the competition for 2021. So let me say the following in relation to the Shaw Trophy, which obviously is given on an annual basis to our house winners. The first thing I need to say is at this moment in time, you, the student body of the school, are unaware of how the academic points were calculated and as such who the winner was of that particular aspect of the house competition. I have on good authority this afternoon the results sitting in front of me and I'd like to extend congratulations to the members of Fitchett House, winners of academic points for 2021. In winning the academic points, Fitchett House has put themselves in a very interesting position indeed. I now wish to move to the overall house points that are awarded in 2021 as follows. And I must say it's strange, speaking from this lectern with nobody here in the chapel and trying to create suspense, but I hope there is some within the spaces you are in campus. In seventh place, with 39 points, Hamilton House. In fifth place, shared with 48 points, Clark and Williams Houses. In fourth place, with 49 points, Hall House. In third place, with 50 points, School House. So that leaves us with two houses remaining, the two top positions on the podium to be given. One of these houses has scored 63 points, the other has scored 61. In a moment I'm gonna name who's first, but the trophy is not next to me up here because Mr. Robson has taken the trophy and along with Mr. Hardman, is standing outside the door of the house who are the winners for 2021. It gives me great pleasure to acknowledge, to congratulate and to celebrate the winners of the 2021 Shaw Trophy and St Paul's Collegiate School Champions, Sargud. In 63 points, Sargud took first place, and in 61 points, outstanding fashion, very health co healthy competition, members of Fitchard House. Uh, to that end, uh, we are in a space where technology does kind of take over, so if you wouldn't mind just giving me a moment, because we are short of three o'clock, I think I might actually just call Mr. Robson to see how he's getting on with the young people of Sargud. Excuse me for a moment. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, it's Mr. Skeen calling. I was wondering if I could just be put in contact uh, with the head of house, uh, good, uh, Samuel Lintz. Oh, yeah, that's me. Hello, Sam. How are you? Yeah, I'm, I'm very well, thank you. I'm actually quite busy at the moment, but I thought I would just uh, drop you a phone call. I'm just uh, looking for a word to explain how things are in Sargood House at the moment. Could you give me a word? A shambles. I, I was expecting something like elated or excited, but I'll, I'll, I'll take shambles, that too. Excellent. Sam, I, I was just wondering, what do you put the success down to in 2021 as champions of the Shaw Trophy? Where, where did that start and finish for you? 
kept it kept it simple I like that, just like your house master, simple. I like that, very good. And uh, final question, I have it on pretty good authority uh, that there were young ladies who basically carried Sargood House to victory. Could you tell me whether or not that's true? It truly is a shambles there, isn't it? I'll ask you, I'll ask you one further time. We'll try again. I just have it on good, good authority that uh, a lot of young ladies who are associated with Sargood House were actually uh, the force behind your success this year. Would you care to pass comment on that? They carried you. I got you. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, well, look, congratulations to all concerned, uh, wonderful winners of the Shaw Trophy uh, for 2021, uh, members of Sargood House. Well done. Uh, sorry for that, uh, ladies and gentlemen and uh, members of our community, but nice to touch base uh, with the students of Sargood who are certainly celebrating what was a wonderful house competition in 2021. As we move towards uh, the conclusion of this final full school assembly for 2021, there will be an opportunity for me to address the entire school community formally tomorrow as part of our senior school prize giving. And indeed, these are very, very different times, recognising that at the conclusion of prize giving tomorrow is the start for many of our senior students of external examinations and a period of concerted effort that will go into those particular assessments. So whilst the end is not imminent in many respects, we do, at this particular time of the school year, wish to formally acknowledge and close proceedings. In doing so, I would like to spend the next couple of minutes along with Associate Headmaster, Mr. Robson, just outlining for the students a couple of details in reference to tomorrow. Tomorrow's uh, prize giving starts at 10 a.m. and housemasters have already indicated to students and communications have been provided for our parent community around the mechanics of tomorrow morning. But come 10 a.m. tomorrow, we will meet virtually once again with the ability to celebrate due to the uh, technology that we're afforded, the wonderful achievements of our students in 2021. Tomorrow there will be an opportunity for some of our students whilst observing very, very strict Alert Level 3 health and safety protocols for them to make their way masked across the front of the school chapel so that we can capture them on camera and as such appropriately recognise their wonderful achievements. My message to the student body is very, very simple. Tomorrow, like today, has been an opportunity for us to formally acknowledge outstanding involvement in school life. And as such, as we move into our full school uh, prize giving tomorrow, we do need to make sure that we maintain formality, that our grooming, that our uniform, and that our behaviour meets the high standards that we have every other day of the school year. In the next 24 hours, much of our character will shine through where it would be easy for us to take soft options and maybe become a little bit more relaxed. Because often in the moments of celebration and in the moments of chapters ending, we can often slide towards the informal. What I need from you as a student population is for you to remain cooperative and mature in the same outstanding fashion that we've seen you deliver throughout these very chaotic times. There are a number of instructions with reference to prize giving, and to that end I'd like to ask the Associate Headmaster, Mr Robson, to come forward to briefly address you. Mr Robson.
Thank you, Mr. Robson, and thank you to you all this afternoon from wherever you have been tuning in uh, for your attention and for your participation as we have sought to acknowledge outstanding student efforts through across 2021. Tomorrow, we will have the opportunity to farewell the senior school and in farewelling to join together for one final formal time in 2021. A reminder to all senior students who are joining us on campus tomorrow and to all other students who are joining us from home that at 8 o'clock tomorrow morning you will tune on in via the school's YouTube channel to one final uh, brief uh, period of uh, key information being provided from this lectern uh, prior to spending invaluable time with your academic mentors as you seek to review and set the final of your academic goals goals before heading into external assessment season. Again, I just wish to thank everybody for the way in which they have contributed, not only to this afternoon's proceedings, but to supporting, to mentoring, and to motivating our young people. And to our young people themselves, thank you so much for your goodwill, and thank you so much for your genuine nature and your collective spirit across our campus. I look forward to joining you all tomorrow as we conclude the year for our senior students, commencing at 10 a.m. Until then, take care of yourselves and take care of each other. Thank you.